Hey, this is Christian with Dark Portents. Um, it's been a little while since I've made a video, so I figured I'd do a late uh, March wrap-up and April TBR video real quick. So, uh, and, and, and some channel news, a little bit of channel news. So last month I finished Dead House Gates by Stephen Erickson for the Legendary Green Team podcast, and we finished uh, reviewing it, though I was sick the day that we were recording the final episode, so I'm not on that episode. Um, and I also read Night of Knives, and there's a review on the channel. If you haven't seen that, you should check that out. It includes the spoiler-free segment. Um, and I started... Uh, Dancer's Lament by Ian C. Esselmont. Oh, which, by the way, Night of Knives, another Malazan novel by Ian C. Esselmont. Uh, so I'm going to continue reading Dancer's Lament when I have time, but I have started reading Memories of Ice by Stephen Erickson, the uh, third book in the Malazan book of the Fallen series, to review it with the Legendary Green Team podcast, and we've already recorded our first episode, as well as something else special that you should watch out for on uh, Green Team. And, um, yeah, so I haven't had as much time to shoot videos because I've been doing a bunch of stuff for the podcast, but uh, I have finished reading 100 Years of Solitude. Uh, which Whitney, who's also going to be doing content for the channel, recommended for us to read and review together. So there's going to be a discussion of 100 Years of Solitude on the channel very soon. And once we get that up, we're going to start reading The Blade Itself by Jill Abercrombie. Now that's going to be, that's my recommendation for uh, we're alternating picks, you know, between her recommendations and my recommendations for the channel. So that's my pick, is The Blade Itself. And uh, it'll be Whitney's first time reading it. It'll be about my fourth time reading The Blade Itself. So I'm excited to see how Whitney uh, takes Abercrombie and what she thinks of the characters and all that fun stuff. Uh, and you can look forward to our review of 100 Years of Solitude or a discussion of 100 Years of Solitude as well. I certainly am. And in the meantime... I have also started reading the first advanced reader copy that I've received in since I started this channel. Uh, I'm reading, I'm going to mispronounce it because it's a Slavic sounding city name. The title of the book is Norilska Groans by Michael Fletcher and Clayton Snyder. And of course there will be a few, full review and discussion of this to come, hopefully before or around the release date, which is sometime next month. I'll throw the date up as well. But uh, so far, it only took one or two chapters for me to know that I'm going to buy this book. It's really cool. I really love Michael Fletcher. I've never heard of this Clayton Snyder person before, but uh, if he contributed to this awesome book, Norilska Groans, then I'm excited for that. Um, so... That's going to take priority along with the Memories of Ice for the review with the green team on my TBR pile. But when I have time to listen to audiobooks that are not Memories of Ice, it's going to be Dancer's Lament by A.N.C. Esselmont. I've also got The Dark Defiles by Richard K. Morgan, which is the third book in his A Land Fit for Heroes series, and I'm reading that on a very low priority. It's the audiobook I put on before I go to bed, uh, or it's something that I read when I'm, uh, when I'm not able to uh, concentrate on reading for review or discussion, uh, but I'm just reading for my own personal pleasure uh, without any of that extra stuff. Not that I don't enjoy reading for discussion or review, because otherwise why would I be doing this? So, yeah, that's some of the stuff that we have to look forward to here, and probably the next video you'll see is either going to be that discussion with Whitney on 100 Years of Solitude, or 
I was planning on putting out a discussion video about Gardens of the Moon, chapters 15 and maybe 16 and 17. I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm going to focus on Peron as a character and contrast him both to Lorne, the adjunct of the Empress in Gardens of the Moon, and to uh, the way that a character like Peron and his actions in those chapters, uh, 15, 16-ish, would be treated by an author like Joe Abercrombie or another grimdark author. So I'll be um, talking about uh, how, why Malazan isn't grimdark through the lens of Ganoes Peron in Gardens of the Moon around, you know, chapters 15, 16, 17. Um, there will be a specific label in the in the video title so you know what the spoilers are up to. Uh, and that, and, and I figure that fits in really well with Christine Volistad's reread because she just released a chapter 15 video, so whichever chapter I decide to do spoilers up to, I can release around whenever Volistad releases her video about uh, those chapters so that people who are reading along with Christine's channel or following al along with Christine's read-along uh, can have a little bit more to talk about in terms of uh, Genoa's Peron and the Gardens of the Moon. And I think that's about it. So that's my uh, March review, April TBR channel news video. Dark Portent signing out.